My name is Stephen Hanley, and I'm the product manager of Media's Slamstick Data Logging Line. Today, we have a four part video series on how to use your Slamstick device. Hopefully, by the end of all this, you can see just how easy these are to use and also yet how powerful they are. In this first video, I'm going to show you what's included with each Slamstick and how to configure the device to meet your testing needs. In the second video, we're going to do some example shock testing. We're going to throw it off a one story garage parking lot, and we're also going to do some drop testing from just a few feet and then we'll look at the data in the Slamstick lab. In the third video, we'll do some vibration testing. It's gonna be mounted to a car engine, and we're gonna do in the Slamstick lab some FFT and some power spectral density analysis. In the fourth video, I'll show you how to export the data to CSV and also to MATLAB so you can do your own analysis. I encourage you to download the Slamstick lab software on our website, as well as these example recordings to play around with before purchase. Let's get started. Included with each slam stick is the device itself, a quick start guide that includes a reference LED status table, the recommended mounting tape, some mounting bolts as well, and a USB cable for charging, setting up the device, and exporting data. Slamstick comes with a software, data sheet, user manual, quick start guide, calibration certificate already loaded onto the device. In this example, I've copied the software onto our desktop and I'm just going to double click it to run. There's no installation needed. The software is available for free on our website and I encourage you to download it and play around with it before purchase. So to configure your device, go to device, configure. In this example, I have three of our SLAM sticks plugged into the computer. When you have multiple units for a test, you may want to synchronize all of these clocks to one another. To do so, you just hit set all clocks, and now each SLAM stick is synchronized to within one second of each other. So I'm going to change the sample rate in this example to 20,000 samples per second per axis. And I'm going to increase our low pass filter to 5 kilohertz. You can also do a few other things in here, such as put in your own device specific information in the device name and device notes field. You can also change the plug in action so that you can record while plugged in uh, to power. In the triggers tab, we're going to add a five second delay so after we press the button, the slam stick is going to wait five seconds before recording. We can also program it to wake at a specific time of day. In this example, we're going to limit the recording to 60 seconds. Because we've limited the recording, we can select the option of making it re-triggerable, which means that once it's finished recording, it will go back to looking to a trigger condition. With this setting, you can make a series of recordings based upon some different events. You can also set pressure, temperature, and acceleration-based triggers. In the channels tab, you can disable and enable the different axes from the main accelerometer. And this Slamstick X has the added DC response triaxial accelerometer. We're going to change the sample rate on that device to 1600 hertz. On the factory calibration tab, it shows what calibration was applied at B-Day. Every device comes with a NIST traceable calibration and calibration certificate. If you like, you can edit this calibration for your own use. On the device info tab, it will show you some different information about your unit, such as the data manufacturer, calibration date, serial number, and other information. Once you're ready to go, you hit apply, and now you can begin your recording. 